Keon Scott has been big in all three games, but how about the second regular season meeting? Anima, a near triple-double in that second meeting. Yeah, both big guys, so important for this West Ball Club. Anima has to be effective, but how do you block a seven-footer out? That's the problem the Cardinals are gonna have. Anima kind of rises Pocono Mountain the... East and Pocono Mountain West in the district quarterfinals. The starting lineups and the opening tap are coming up. For the West Panthers, the number one seed in Quad A, it's Tynell Fortune, the Mountain Valley Conference MVP, a 5'10 senior, number 11. Michael Collins, a 5'11 junior, number 12, is also in the backcourt. Up front, Tyrell Dixon, he's played a done a great job in the second half of the season. A 6'2 junior, number 25. Keon Scott, the 6'3 senior, number 55, is up front. And the center is Kevin Anima, the 7-foot senior, number 23. And as we get set for Quad A quarterfinal action, we go to the third man. Of there is Brad Pencil, 22 seasons overall, over 400 victories on Tillery. Now here's Anima. Anima backs in and has it stolen by Kamal Richards. It's a two-on-one. Kamal with the finger roll, wave it off. It's an offensive foul, and Kamal Richards has two fouls in the first minute and 45 seconds. How about that play by Tanel Fortune? Just holds his ground as Richards comes up over Anima. Nice entry pass, though, by Grotevent to find him inside. Fortune for wow. three. Tynell Fortune from downtown. 42 three-pointers for Tynell this, this year. Hitting the three penetration. Look at that three from way beyond the arc. And then a great bounce pass. It's tied up at six here in the first quarter. That's knocked away by Amoroso. Tynell on the run. Left side for Bryce, who gets the roll. Wendell Great Bryce, uh, as he did in the Emmaus game, taking it in this game here uh, against, against Gavara, Weston. Now Grodevin, Garcia, it's a two if it goes. Keon Scott tears away the rebound. Four rebounds early for Keon. Uh, go to the hook and miss, and it's rebounded by Grodevin. It's knocked away, however, by Tyrell Dixon. Dixon will go in and lay it in. Tyrell Dixon had nine points, nine rebounds in the first meeting, but then had 14 rebounds in the second meeting and 14.7 rebounds in the third. That's blocked by Anima. And Keon goes to the Hurt. floor for Tillery with the rebound. That's knocked away. Dixon for Collins. Back to Dixon who lays it in. Tyrell with four. I believe this is in the second. It is at halftime, Liberty leads Bangor 32-13 in the other quarterfinal in Quad A. That's knocked away by Collins. Gives us a chance to give you Pocono Mountain West's team resume. The Panthers are the number one seed, the Mountain Valley champions. They have never won a district championship, but they have been in the district tournament every year of their existence. That is nine years. They have had some big wins this year. Teams over 500, Liberty, Pocono East twice, Hazleton and Scranton. Hazleton and Scranton up in District 2. Pocono West is 3-3 three and three in District quarterfinals. In preparation for play like this, both these clubs, uh, Bob, off uh, out of conference games, try to schedule some really tough competition to prepare them uh, for games like this. And I tell you what, it really does pay off when you play these pressure games. There's one guy I should know. It's uh, Mr. Bill Pencil. That's Brad Pencil's father, the legendary coach of Bangor High School. We were just over there the other night, saw his portrait outside of the gymnasium, which they the court they've named after him. Let's go to Mark. Brad Pencil just told his team, you know, you got to rebound the ball. You're slow getting back on defense, and offensively, he wants to see his team more under control. Back to you. It's Ruiz playing deny on Tynell Fortune right now. Scott turns to the baseline, and he scores off the glass. Back That's to you. his first. Where you need a coach, a trainer, and a cut man over there. <laughs> Boyle drops it, Amoroso, he's triple teamed. 
And it is knocked away, taken back by Bryce. Bryce has that block by Escobar, but there is Keon Scott to grab and score. When you got somebody yeah, open on the alley, just get it overhead and then uh, just get it out quickly. There you see, you want to put the ball on the floor there. Want to look for an open man, get it started that way. Opens it up for the Panthers Time and Scott makes it. Been kind of ugly. Pocono East leads it by a score of 24-21. There have probably been a lot, well, there have been a lot more fouls than field goals in this ball game. Yeah, I, I don't think either coach has to be happy with their execution. And what do you expect, though, Bob, this type of game, the competitive nature that it is, the fourth time these two clubs are meeting, just battling in their very aggressive, very physical type play on both clubs' part throughout this first ten, half. Ten fouls each on these two clubs. And uh, Fortune leads West. One field goal for Ty Nella, three. Other than that, free throws. Dixon and Scott have four apiece. Tillery has ten. Escobar has four. And one, two, three, four, five other guys have two points each. You know, Rich, you know, Rich is being uh, on the sidelines with his foul trouble, and you look at the rebounding there, and basically pretty even in that regard. Turnovers also, you know, not handling the ball very well, each one of them, but aggressive defense on each club's part, uh, kind of equal in that regard, too. So nothing outstanding as far as stats are concerned f favoring either team. The little shovel boy, pass, doing a good job for the Cardinals in that first half is Escobar, and how about this kid? you got to watch him at all times, but... Relatively quiet as far as offensive production is concerned from the field. That's one big three by Ty Al Fortune, although he sat on that uh, foul line quite a bit in that first half. That kid there always gives you 100%. Uh, Dixon to the uh, with the steal gets the breakaway, and again, on the fly, Terrell Dixon, I mean, the good job that he's done thus far in the first half. And Bob, kind of an unsung hero for this uh, West Ball Club throughout the year, Dixon. Now you don't mention, you mention a, a fortune, you mention a, a Nima Scott in the paint. Dixon's been uh, quite a performer for him throughout the year. Split with Communications Tech down in Philadelphia. You just think of clubs that just would love to get to the district playoff situation, and they've been there 24 times. That's amazing. Michael Collins with the tip away, and it looks like the starting five in there as well for Pocono Mountain East. Here's a Nima inside, got it. That's the first basket of the night Back for out. Kevin Anima. Anima up for the block. Kevin Anima has 110 blocks now on the season. He averages four and a half blocks a game. It's Liberty 45, Bangor 23. Dixon for Keon Scott. Scott running the floor well. Garcia. Richards. Richards to the baseline. Has it knocked away by Tynell Fortune. Richards comes up with it. The loose ball grabbed by Pacheco. And he is tied up by Keon Scott. The arrow, the arrow goes to West. Oh, and that's a travel, by the way. He's not allowed to run the baseline. That should have been a travel. Fortune drives, scores, and gets fouled. You go back to the other end, you're not allowed to run the baseline except after a basket. So they should not have been able to run the baseline. Meanwhile, Tynell Fortune will have a three-point opportunity. Yeah, you don't get back. Uh, this kid doesn't waste any time. He gets up there quickly. Escobar picks up his first personal. Fortune hits the free throw. 12 points for Tynell, and West has taken the lead. the lead. Garcia with the rebound. Richards, Kamal leans in. Keon Scott with the block. Richards with the rebound, and a name of... That's Tillery there, athleticism again. Gets his own, oh, Kamal Keon Richards. Is He's in double figures. That's 10 rebounds for Keon. Fortune trying to draw the foul on Garcia. The officials were having none of it. Quindell Bryce drives right side. Here's Tynell. They brought in Ruiz. Ruiz did a nice job on Tynell Fortune in the first half. Fortune flips it up and misses. Keon Scott with one chance, two chances, with the basket and the foul. 
They'll call it on Ruiz and a three-point opportunity. Oh, I beg your pardon, they call it on Tillery. It's the second on Tillery and a three-point opportunity for Keon Scott. That's a real nice effort by Keon. Just good work ethic underneath one, two times, and then gets there the playing tough defense and his timeout with his foul trouble. Bryce wants to push it in. No, instead nice. he puts up the three and hits it. Just his sixth of the season, but it's in a That's big a spot. Distance. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point lead for West, and East wants a timeout. It's an 8-0 run, so West pulls away from the 28-all tie to take the eight-point lead. Watch Bryce there. It's a little move. Uh, Garcia pulls back over the top. Bryce, nice shot. Bob, how big Line is that there. for a guy who's... But he forced him to go right, and Tynell just wanted to go right, and that, uh, he went over the half-court line. Pacheco on the drive, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Pacheco. That is his fourth personal, and it's going to give West a chance with three and a half seconds left in the third. Yeah, you got to make the good decisions here. I mean, you see the charge there, and I think that was a good call, no question about it. I mean, you don't take it in that quarter, West moves left to right. Tillery, the short jumper comes off, and another rebound for Keon Scott. I'll tell you what, it looked like West was beating the uh, Cardinals to the glass in that third quarter, but uh, our astute statistician, Bob Matson for the game, has him even at five. Oh, fourth. Kevin Anima throws a two-hand jam down. I kind of missed that one, but we got to get Mama Anima out to get the toaster. It is jam time. Keon Scott with the assist. Energizes the crowd. Let's watch it here. Keon with the little dish to Kevin, and Kevin over the elbow iron. throws it down. Escobar misses the three. Pacheco has it blocked by Anima. Anima gets smacked around after he grabs the rebound, and that is going to go against Tillery, and it is his third. It's a seven-point lead for West. Richards. And that is blocked that by Anima. Let's watch Anima coming out. And this is what he does. He's got to be a little careful with that. He loves to knock him away. Escobar almost got stuck nice in the look. corner. Here's Garcia. And Anima rebounds. Yeah, that was a good look, uh, Garcia. Percentage shot, a top sh uh, type shot. How about Fortune? Drops watch it out! From Anima, who throws it down? I don't know where we're going. I mean, we... we, we Cleared out Walmart. I don't know where we're going next for the next toaster, but Mama Nima, you got to get another one. There's a, there's a Kmart over by the okay, Interboro Bridge. Go. Coming at him strong, protects the ball. Watch this. Well, that's the dish to Nima for the dunk. Penetration again by Tom. Club. I mean, he can hurt you in many ways. I mean, he hurts you from the outside. Perimeter, he'll take it to the basket. It is a five-point game. Dixon in trouble in the backcourt. Gets it across. Bryce. Bryce nice. fakes one way, goes the other, and lays it in. Quindell Bryson double figures with 10 off the bench. Tillery leans in. He goes over under. Tillery with 16. It's back to a five-point game. Yeah, I like that move, putting Tillery in the paint area. Uses athleticism. Dixon alone at the other end, and Tyrell Dixon lays it in. And Brad Pencil wants it. Time out after one of his baskets. Now to get it going, bound boy, Cardinals failed to get back. Critical time of the game. But they can move up and down. I mean, there's no question about it. The West Panthers love that type of game. There's Scott to Fortune. Back to Scott. Look at that ball movement. Good movement against the pressure. Pressure, all red shorts, uh, uh, red shirts. Up court, leaves the Panthers open for an easy one. Once again, the other three spots are full. Allen has beaten Easton. Allen will play the winner of this one on Wednesday night. Liberty has beaten Bangor. Pottsville has beaten Nazareth. So it will be Liberty against Pottsville in the other semifinal. Here's Dixon. We've talked about Dixon a lot. He has been big in the second half of the season. He has really become 
one of the top players on this West team. Yeah, and you know, he gets stuck on certain names throughout the year. Of course, a Tynell Fortunate, he's had a great year, no question about it. But kind of guys like Dixon get pushed to the wayside, and you, you fail to realize their importance uh, to, the, to a ball club. That's knocked away, and here comes Fortune the other way. Tynell lays it in. Fortune with 17. He's hit a lot of his points from the free throw. Fortune is forced out of bounds by Escobar, and that's the fourth on Justin Escobar, and it sends the Panthers' best free throw shooter to the line. And that was not having an exceptional night from the line, I don't think, tonight, is he, Bob? From my recollection, of course, you have ten for, right ten for fourteen and well, for a mere that's no wait for a mere mortal like us. <laughs> right, that's that's no. pretty good. But that's for Tynell, who's uh, an eighty percent shooter, I, he's had a couple of misses, but I he's just, hit three straight. I didn't think he uh, was that effective from the line. I had that good a percentage, but he sh certainly is shooting that good percentage again. And what a kid to have on the line at this time of the game. Twelve. Points from the line alone for Tynell Fortune. And Bob, another thing, the sideline was basically closed when that foul was, and he somehow, I don't know how, with the narrowest openings, he can slither by. Kamal Richards, 20 seconds left. Garcia for three. Look out if he gets hot. No, Tillery with the rebound. He steps out for three. That's off. Escobar with the putback for two. And a quick timeout for Pocono East with nine seconds left. Down four. Great uh, play he's ball by Justin Escobar and I put back on that miss. But with Garcia, Richards, Tillery, I mean, you've got some fine outside perimeter type shooters and uh, things can happen. Real quick, I think Mark has checked on timeouts. East is out of timeouts. West has won. Keon Scott will inbound. Quindell Bryce. Bryce double teamed and they have to foul him right away. I mean, Bryce could have just sat there for as long as East wanted to let him. Bryce is one for two from the line. And that is a big one. Asayo out. Versus in. Bryce has had a big night off the bench. Yeah. Yeah, this kid came along. I mean, he had a big year last year and uh, kind of quiet. Or didn't see much playing time early in the year, but really has come along toward the latter stages of the year. Garcia for the long oh. three banks it in, but they do not have a timeout. West lets the oh clock run out, and oh Pocono my. West will go on to the district semifinal. It's a 56 53 victory for the Panthers. Hard earned victory for these Panthers. Uh, Cardinals keep coming at them right to the end, and this is a long three by Garcia off the glass, but. Clock runs out, no timeouts to stop the clock, and your West Panthers move on. And Bob.